So time for our Gaelic Games preview here in Highland. And this weekend, our sole focus is, of course, the National Football League. And to look ahead, we have uh, a regular contributor, Brendan Kilcoyne, on the programme. And also, GA writer with the uh, the Irish News, Cahar O'Kean. Gentlemen, good to see you. Good to talk to you. Good evening, Good evening, How are you? Well, uh, Kahar, we'll, we'll maybe get your thoughts first of all, Kahar, because it's been a while since you've been, been on air with us. Um, we're heading into the league. Uh, it's an exciting time. All the teams have gone through their, their pre-season competitions. Is there any of the Northwest counties that, that showed you anything that there's a, there's a lot of promise there in the, in the opening couple of games? I read I read Eamon McGee's column there the other day, and he said, you know, never never judge a footballer in January, never judge a footballer in this time of the year, and it's it's hard to tell. Um, obviously Donegal have done fairly well in the in the McKenna Cup as as it goes. Um, maybe some of the areas of of concern for them, um, they've they've had a wee bit of a look at that as well, but uh, they've they've done all right. Tyrone have you know. Tyrone have got a lot of a lot of new faces in there, and, and they're obviously playing catch up from the from the team holiday around Christmas and, and that. So it's, it's it's nearly impossible to judge them. Um, Derry have a couple of new faces in as well. Went fairly strong in the in the McKenna Cup, and I don't think they were don't think they were shedding any tears over losing the the semi final to Donegal. I know there was a wee bit of unhappiness in, in a lot of the counties about the you know piling the games on top of the Sigerson and different things. So. Um, I, th- I think there'll be nobody getting too downhearted about this time of year. I think they've all they've all probably held their own um, to to some degree, and all took an, t- took enough out of the McKenna Cup that they'll feed them into the league. Yeah, Brendan, you watched a lot of the Donegal games. Um, what's the positives? Do you feel for Declan Boner coming out of the McKenna Cup as we go to what is classed as could be a real tough start against Mayo this weekend? Yeah, there's no doubt it's going to be a tough start. Listen, I suppose the fact that they got four games, Oshin, and they got to try out a good few players, and I suppose the positives, you know, you look at the form of Pather Morgan, he's playing great football, they got Michael Murphy back on the pitch, so, you know, and we saw last weekend how important, and we all knew that before last weekend, we know that a long time now, the, the significance and importance of having Michael on the pitch. And having a fit Michael on the pitch, you know, last year, you know, obviously there were niggles and there were injuries that curtailed his probably training regime getting into the big games. So Donegal will be hoping that he can get an injury-free run at it. And, you know, you're looking at Donegal, will they go as gung-ho as they have done last year or will they revert to a more defensive type, uh, more defensive type system? Bearing in mind that you know they, they they have been opened up defensively, and there obviously are concerns about how they will defend, and they're going to be tested as soon as they get into Markovic Park next Sunday against a Mio team that you know you have to have great admiration for. They keep coming every year, they keep coming back, and the players back this year. Jason Doherty is back, Brendan Harrison is back. I don't think or I don't think Killian O'Connor is going to make it, but Ashin Mullen obviously not heading to Australia was a huge lift and you can feel the reverberations and the excitement of that around me also. Listen, Donegal have a, they, they, it, it's going to be a big and important league campaign for them because then, you know, it's, it's with the championship starting in April this year, I think at around 24th of April, Donegal are out against Armagh. Every game, the seven games that they play through the National League are going to be of huge importance. And we all know that, you know, teams, in order to win the All Ireland at this stage, you nearly have to be playing in Division One. So the league has assumed greater significance down through the years. So it has, and Donegal, you know, a, a way to albeit in Markovich Park and Sligo is a massive game, a massive opener for both teams, and it'll be just interesting to see how they line up or with what new can they bring to the table. As I said, Pader Morgan has been in scintillator form for both Donegal and Lyit, who had a massive win during the week against UCD. Yeah. Uh, Brendan mentioned the point about maybe question marks over Donegal defensively, Kahar, but at the other end, if you have your men scoring, is that such a big a concern, the way modern day football has been played at the moment? Well, I, th- I think the big thing for Brendan's 100% right, the big thing for Donegal over the last over the last few years has been their ability to control games by, by being so dominant in the middle of the field um, so so physically imposing in and, and around the middle that they, they can control possession and, and win so much ball and, and sort of 
almost no matter how much they're conceding, they'll always get enough ball and enough chances to win any game. Um, it's it's what happens when that breaks down. That's that's the that's the big issue. And I suppose that when they look back at the Toronto game last year, it was an area that they've you know they've usually done well against Toronto. They didn't do too badly, but by their own standards, it, it wasn't the domination that they used to, and they ended up losing the game. But um, look, Donegal for for a wee while have struggled defensively. You know the fact that. You know they they haven't found any real any real sort of strength in the full back line. Uh, Neil Neil McGee still still horsing away. I don't, don't know what way he'll be for any of the National League um, this year. Steve McManaman's had his own injury problems, and you know without those two, they look very very weak um, in terms of men that can do the man marking jobs. Um, you know to me. I think what typifies the problem for them, like Owen Van Gallagher is potentially one of the best attacking wing halfbacks in Ireland if he got a run in the position and got, got play in it. But so often in the last couple of years, he's had to play fullback, had to play cornerback, had to try and do different jobs um, that, that maybe don't necessarily suit his, his skill set 100%. And just think, you know, until Donegal find a couple of real dogged horrible defenders if you like they're go- they, you know it's, it's going to be an uphill battle they won the big trophies for them yeah. well Brendan two games to start things in a, in a seven day period Mayo in Marchevic Park and Sligo and then the following again against Kildare uh, if you got two wins in the opening two matches it would put you on a on a solid footing to, to stay up in Division 1 which would be the, the main target as you go to Championship Brendan Oh, absolutely, Ashin. Like you know, but that that's easier said than done. It's a, you know, as I mentioned, it's going to be a huge task. There's there's you know, you're coming against up against a Mio team who are there thereabouts every year. They're they're so strong in every department, and you know, you have the likes of Owen McLaughlin. We saw him play for uh, Limerick and Sigerson there a couple of weeks ago, and he looks in great shape. And um, you have Ryan O'Donoghue, who was re- added real jizz to the Mio forward line. So. You know, they're, they're going to be in good shape, I feel, coming into this game. James Horan will have them well-primed, and it's a big ask for Donegal. I, I think it's going to be a fantastic day down in Markovic on Sunday. It's a tight pitch, you know, 12,000 capacity. It's going to be so. It's going to be full house. So it's going to be a big game with a, an element of championship feel about it. To have the crowds back is a big thing, too. And, you know, it's important, I suppose, to, to that Donegal travel in numbers and get behind the team down there. But... You know, you're looking at the second game then against Kildare, and I'm sure that's one that Donegal will identify as a must win. You know, I think it'll be a bonus to get something. There's never too much between Mio and Donegal, but Mio have been getting the better of these ties in recent years, and Donegal need to get to the stage where they're taking out these big guns on a regular basis, and they haven't been doing that, Oshin. They haven't had a, you know, okay, Tyrone, they've had joy over Tyrone, but that's turned back the other way after last year, and you know, the Kerrys, the Dublins, the Mio's, these are the teams that they need to lay a marker down against if they have aspirations to go on and be competing at the latter end of the championship come the summer. And, you know, the questions that have been asked of Donegal in recent years, they haven't really answered. And yes, they've landed Ulster championships, but it's beyond that. And it's taken them aforementioned teams down that are the big question mark for them. So I think it would be a bonus if Donegal get out and out of the game on Sunday. But I feel that Kildare game at home is a must win for Donegal, Ashin. Okay. Uh, a lot of mention, obviously, about the championship, Kehar, from, from both of you guys. And, and we haven't even started the, the league yet, but the championship is the big one. Does Dublin and Kerry then look into, and even Tyrone now in that respect as well, given they're the defending All Ireland champions? Do they read much into the league? Do they take much away from it as they head to the, to the, the big competition of the year? I think they'll they'll read a fair bit in terms of performances and and who who's playing well in their own setup uh, results ways. You know, I, I think the the first priority for everybody is is making sure they stay up and particularly for for Tyrone just in the in the winter that it's been obviously the the, the late late East Championship in terms of the new split season and then the the club been busy then they, they had the, the holiday away in Florida and they you know they looked very rusty when they came home in the McKenna Cup they tried out a lot of new players and so it, it's hard to see that they just hit the ground running in terms of the National League um, Tyrone have had plenty of seasons where they've just scraped their way to, to safety in Division 1 and, and that has contented them um, and I think for them I think they would take the same at this stage of the year um, Kerry and Dublin 
probably different different set of priorities. Um, Kerry, oh, Kerry's just their eighteenth year in a row in, in Division One. Like they don't they don't get relegated. Um, they they're always looking towards the the top end of it and the attacking quality that they have. But then you know, same same issue as with Donegal. Um, in terms of finding the real quality one to one defenders that. I wouldn't say Tyrone on un- earth, but Tyrone found found reason to trust last year. Um, left their full back line one on one, and that was a huge impact on on why they won the All Ireland. And Kerry just aren't in a position yet where they seem like they're able to do that either. They don't they don't have the one to one defenders. Um, probably like most people have been I've been a wee tiny bit surprised that that Stefan Ockenbur has come home from. From Australia and was such a you know such a tower and full back on the on the under twenty one team before he went, went went away and has been sort of playing around midfield since he came home and just you know that that they haven't tried him in the full back line to see how he gets on maybe maybe he's past that maybe he was never going to be a long term full back for them but given their lack of options in that in that area of the field I'm I'm surprised that they they haven't looked at that. Yeah. Uh, as for Monaghan, Monaghan, Tyrone, uh, does Monaghan have a bit more work done than Tyrone as they head to the start of the league? Is that a, a game that Monaghan can can win at Healy Park, given the fact that they played on it as well last week? So uh, they've, a, they've a bit of freshness with the turf around the Oma venue as well, Kiar? Yep, Mon- look, Mon- Monaghan will look back on last year with real disappointment. Like, I, you know, I sort of wrongly in the end, but I sort of told anybody who listened last year that that, that I thought Monaghan would, would win the Ulster final. Um, I thought they would beat Tyrone, and had they brought anything in the first half, I think they'll, they'll look back with real regret on that. The Monaghan have have had a lot of sharpness about them in the last eighteen months, a, lot, a, a fair wee bit of freshness, and a few a few players who have really developed over the last couple of years. Garen Mulligan, um, and in their attack as well. I see I see just the mechanic up interest, and they sort of pushed Connor McCarthy to wing half back. Um, which which will be interesting to look at, see how he gets on there, and it could cause teams a lot of a lot of problems from there. But look, Mon Monon are always there thereabouts. And we talk about their age profile, we've been talking about their age profile for a long time. But you know, the the fellas that are there, Darren Hughes is still as fit and as fresh. Um, Connor McManus will come out of his come out of his shell in a couple of weeks' time, I'm sure. And um you know, Monaghan staying up is obviously the aim for them as well, but you know, what's this their seventh, eighth season in a row in Division One and uh they're they're well established and I, I would fancy I would fancy that they're further down the line than Tyrone for this weekend, surely. Yeah. And uh Dublin are starting things off, Brendan, this weekend, Saturday night against uh, Armagh and uh, I'm sure the dubs will be looking to make a, a statement in twenty twenty two given the way that they, they lost their, their reign last year and uh they want all them trophies that they lost back again, so they will, Brendan and they're gonna you expect them to have a good crack at the league, do you? Oh, absolutely. And the dubs all as well. You know what they're going to bring. There's so much quality up there. And, you know, I suppose they have the one asset that's going to be crucial going into this year. I feel it's squad squad depth. You know, there's no doubt about it. You know, you're looking at big Pather coffee burn, as you call him, in the middle of the field. He's a huge unit of a man. And if they have him to complement Brian Fenton's attributes there, obviously that's a big, big asset to have. So it is. And, you know, it's about unearthing another couple of forwards for themselves. I don't think Paul Mannion, Paul Mannion appears to be staying with Kilmacud and hasn't come back into the fold. And, you know, quality forwards like him, no matter how much you can produce, are hard come by. And, you know, would you just feel that, you know, having that squad dead for the seven game National League games in nine weeks and then turning into championship then straight after that is going to be hugely important that you can have players that you can trust come the heat of the championship come the summer like listen the league is very important and it has huge significance obviously kind of thing to all teams but at the end ultimately it's it's about getting your squad ready and getting players that you can trust to throw into the fray come championship time in april may june when the when the chips are really down and you know, Dublin, there's no doubt about it, they're going to have a dearth of talent in that respect. So they are, are a huge amount of talent in that respect. And, you know, they'll be coming up against an Armagh side who have made strides under Kieran McGinney. They are getting better. They're going to be a big ass for Donegal in the first round of the Championship 2 on April 24th. Because McGinney will have them firing on all cinders. I've seen huge improvements. And you see the likes of Rian O'Neill and these guys, and they're just, you know, he's a phenomenal footballer. So, you so. You know, it's a big ask for Armagh to go to Crow Park against Dublin in the first game, and it's hard to see anything but a Dublin win there. 
But again, it comes back to squad depth and how they can manage that through the next couple of months in order to be best prepared come the big tests that are going to lie ahead for all these teams. Yep. Just back to uh, Tyrone, Kehar, because they lost a couple of players over the last number of weeks. Four, four or five players gone from, from the panel. They got their All-Ireland medal and they decided to step away. What about Tyrone's step then as they go to 2022? There's no doubt it takes a, uh, there's no doubt it takes a hit with, with what they've lost. The only thing being that you know, you, you, they probably had had a greater de- degree of depth than most counties last year when you had when you had Richie Donnelly and, and Rory Brennan and Ronan O'Neill didn't even make the twenty six for the All Ireland final um, last year. Sort of shows you where where they're at as well. So you know, they had back to back Ulster one and under twenty teams in in twenty nineteen twenty twenty. They had we bit early yet for for last year's team that reached the All Ireland minor final, but. I'm not, and then obviously the strength of club football in Tyrone. I'm not saying that uh, particularly. I think Mark Bradley and and Tiernan McCann will be difficult to replace in terms of you know match real match day options that they were regularly used and the joy of. But but I think um, I don't think it's it's just a disaster for them. Certainly, I think they'll they'll find a way to cope and they'll and they'll give experience to a few fellas and they'll I think they'll rebuild that strength fairly sharpish. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll move on to D- Division Two. Uh, Kahar Derry ticking on down uh, under Rory Gallagher. Derry have been progressing over the last couple of years. Can the Oakleaf men get out of that division and and make it to the top flight of the league, Kahar? They have progressed hugely under Rory. Um, I think Rory himself has looked at the league and and maybe you know un- unusually since he has come to Derry, you know the thing about Rory. In all his in all his public dealings and in everything that he's said publicly, you know, he, he has really talked the team up. Really, you know, why shouldn't we? And we, you know, last year, you know, we expect to walk out of Division Three here. We expect to go to Balbuffe and beat Donegal, and and for the first time, he's probably just tempered it a wee tiny bit by by talking about sort of, you know, needing to break into the top twelve, um, which suggests you know top top four of that division. And I certainly think that's where Dale will be at. But it's a it's a tough league. To get out of like there's decent there's decent teams in there Galway Ross Common Cork Derry you know there's enough there that you just need everything to go your way Derry are definitely in the mix for for going up but like I wouldn't like to be putting any money on any of them at this stage because there's very very little between probably a handful of those teams yeah and a good start against Down on Saturday, uh, six o'clock start in, in Celtic Park for for the Derry men. If you are to be in that mix, as we know, Brendan, you have, you have to make sure you win your home games first of all. Yeah, a hundred percent. And listen, I know Rory well, and I know he'll have them well fired up. I think he's done a great job in Derry so far, and he seems to have pulled the whole thing together. The team are now playing as a team. You know, there was all this talk behind the scenes of Derry not pulling together and Club V County and all that. But he see, he seems to have crossed that bridge with them and he, he's got a unified bunch of players that I think and a lot of quality. And he also, has, I suppose, introduced a few of the minors, the All-Ireland winning minor team, and it's about integrating them into the team. And listen, there's no doubt there's a lot of, there's a huge amount of quality footballers in Derry. And R- Rory is pulling them in the right direction. And I think they'll give Division 2 a right good shot and, I think they'll have too much for down on Saturday night, particularly at home. And it would be a great start to get them off and get them going in the league. Um, and, you know, they're going to be there, going to, again, be one eye on Ulster Championship. And, you know, I know Rory Gallagher well. He takes no challenge lying down and he's going to really push them on. And, you know, I can see them causing a lot of teams problems this year, Oshin. Yeah, we'll, we'll dip into Division 4 briefly. Uh, we don't get too many opportunities to talk about, about London. Uh you probably don't know a lot about the Donegal boys, Cahar, that's involved with London, but uh, Enda McCormick and Nathan Michael Wayne, Brendan, are uh, are both part of the panel. They they left the roots of Donegal a couple of years ago, and, and they're looking to make a mark now in the inter-county scene. So they are. Enda, of course, has been around uh, a senior panel with, with Donegal before, but uh, Nathan's now in the senior panel with London playing, having been part of a backroom team for Donegal at, at one stage. So I'm sure it's very exciting for, for those two Donegal boys, Brendan, as, the, as they head into a league opener against Carlo at the weekend. Yeah, two great lads that I know well, Nathan and Enda. And, you know, Nathan was involved with Declan Boner's backroom team last year and Enda McCormick has been on the fringes of squads and played under 21 with Donegal over the last couple of years. So it's great that them lads are over there and, 
you know, London provide a great service for GA footballers. And, you know, I've been over there and I've played senior Connacht Championship over there down through the years. And it's a, it's a massive, they've, they've huge respect for it. And it'd be great to see these lads do well with London. Um, it'll be interesting. I know they're away to Carlo this weekend and, you know, it'd be a big ask for them. But it's, it's hard to know where they're at, really. There's no form guide there from, I suppose, from McKenna, from McKenna Cups or FPD leagues or anything like that. So it's hard to know where they're at. Carlo will have a bit of an advantage in that they've played a couple of games, I would imagine. But I tell you, they're two good players, so they are. And, you know, club men of your own, Ashing. so we'll be hoping, we'll be all keeping an eye in London this year to hope to see that they can push on as long as not interfering with Sligo's progress. <laughs> well, there's there's another team in Division 4 I'm going to mention, Brendan Tupperary. That'll be looking to get out of there. And there's a, a letter Kenny Gales man associated. Kieran Cannon has uh, stepped up to the senior ranks with uh, with the Premier County uh, this year. So Tup, given the way they've played in championship football over the last couple of years, and remember they won a monster title too, they'll really want to be out of Division 4, uh, as will Wolf Sligo, Brendan. As will Cavan, who are Ulster champions recently too, you know. So, it's a, you know, you're talking about Division 4 and you're looking at two recent provincial champions from... You know, not that long ago, just over 12 months ago. So it's got, you know, every division. And that's why the league is so exciting. You know, there's a lot of really, really good games and the teams are relatively well matched. And, you know, when you see Tipperary and Cavan down Division 4 and it's going to re add real spice to it. It's going to be hard for teams like Cavan or like Sligo, Leitrim, London, these teams to make progress, particularly when you have teams of that. But, you know, in Tipperary's, I, I don't think Quinlevin made himself available this year for some reason. And he's obviously going to be a big loss. He's a, you know, he's a huge, huge player for them. So he is. But Tip have a lot of really good footballers. And you would expect Tip and Cavan to have too much for the rest of the teams there. But it'll be interesting to see how it pans out. Yeah. OK, then, guys, time to put your, your head on the block. Brendan, who's going to win Division 1 and who's going to be relegated? Oh, um, I, th I think I'll have to go for Dublin because I think there will be a bounce back from them after last year. Um, who's going to be relegated then? You know, I would have to say Kildare and I don't know one of the others. You know, Armagh would be the obvious choice, but that doesn't mean to say that it's going to happen. I think Kildare, Kildare are going to get a bounce too from, you know, new management up there. They're all excited too about having Paul Galvin in. I think he's doing some coaching on the forwards, but... Um, it's you know you think there's a lot of experience through the rest of the team so I think they will struggle the most and I don't know who the second team is going to be OK then Cahar what about you who's going to win Division 1 and who's the team, two teams that are going to drop down uh, one on it Kerry Kerry would be my my favourite team won it um, at, at this stage of the year just because of the attacking quality of 10, 10 to Shane 3 before the thing gets really really tactical and bogged down um, who's going down it could be <laughs> There's a lot of teams in, in, in that mix. I think Kildare well there. Armagh, it's a big second season for them. Second season's always always tricky. There's only, what, six teams in the last decade. Outside of the big sides, only six teams in the last decade have survived more than a year in Division 1, and of those four got relegated in their second season. So that's uh, that's what Armagh's challenge looks like. Um, they'll be there. I think Tyrone, just by the nature of their winter again, um, I think we'll, we'll be looking at, at staying up in Monaghan and be happy to stay up so that's your that's your four at the bottom for me. Right. Okay. Don't think all stand out of it then, Cahar. Is that what you're telling us? Maybe, maybe, maybe <laughs> five at the bottom and three at the top. <laughs> he's, he's been nice, actually. <laughs> <Sashi. laughs> uh, what about Sam Maguire, Cahar? Who are you tapping for it? Hey, look, I, I honestly, honestly think that because we're not talking about them, there's very little focus on on the fact that a couple of things have gone for in the last couple of months. Mayo are are praying. To, I just I just think you know they've been the last two All Ireland finals. You look back at last year's All Ireland final and had they taken their goal chances in the first twenty minutes, that's a totally different game. Oshin Mullen staying at home is enormous. Um, what what level of fitness Kelly O'Connor gets up to? But as Brent mentioned Ryan O'Donoghue, Tommy Conroy, Matthew Ryan. Those boys are all a year older, a year stronger. I just, I just think that Mayo team is is sitting on the on the cusp of it, and if you're looking, if you're looking for a wee outside bet, definitely, definitely Mayo. There's teams there, Kerry, Dublin, all the rest, but but just Mayo could be the the team for me. Had a big call, by Cahar, Brendan. Yeah, it is, but like it makes a lot of sense, you know. They're they're not. We know they're not going to be far there is because they've competed so well over the last number of years, and they have got a great impetus impetus boost with the 
availability of Oshie Mullen, Killian coming back, and you know he mentioned Tommy Conroy and Ryan O'Donoghue there too in an inside line. They're going to take some stop, and so they are. And I just feel, you know, that they've got so close on so many occasions that they are going to push everything out to make sure that they can get across the line this year. And you know. Kerry have their issues defensively. Where Dublin at after last year will be the big question, I think. So who are you tipping then? I'm tipping Dublin. You're tipping <laughs> Dublin. Okay. <laughs> Brent, Brent, Brendan Kilcoyne and Cahill Cain, uh, good to see you. Good to talk to you. Thanks for uh, joining us on Highland today to look forward to the league. Thanks, Thanks man.